This video is going to be all about the transform tool. Um, it's incredibly useful and incredibly powerful, and you're going to use it a lot. Um, I'm going to duplicate this layer just because I'm going to mess up the first one. And um, you can usually right click on a layer and, and duplicate it or drag it uh, onto a new layer, and usually it'll um, make an make a exact copy of it. So if I go to Edit, Transform, it'll automatically select everything in that layer that I'm selected on and put a box around it. The default transform allows me to kind of scale it up and scale it down and to rotate. So those are useful things. Um, definitely, if you're going to start doing like photo bashing and photo collage, you'll need them all the time. There's a few different options if you right click. You can transform the scale. You'll notice this takes away rotation. You can um, select rotation and you can only rotate, which is kind of cool because it um, makes sure you don't mess anything else up. Skew is really fun because you can kind of pick uh, various corners and other things and it will allow you to kind of change shapes drastically. You can also distort, which allows you to pull corners and lines and really make things go crazy. Um, you'll notice that this image is getting uh, kind of pixelated and, and junky. Um, when you actually process the transformation, it, it will uh, get back, and you'll see that in a second. So the perspective one is kind of cool because it, you can make it look like it's going in perspective by uh, picking lines or corners, and that can be very useful for sort of like pasting things flat onto other stuff. One of the more useful ones is warp because it allows you to selectively distort specific areas uh, more on a curve, um, which I find to be very, very useful for like taking pictures of paintings. Like if you take a picture of a painting and you want it to be like perfect and flat and squared at the corners, it's kind of impossible to do in a, in a picture. Um, so you can warp the edges to kind of align them with a perfect grid. Um, you know, because lenses are curved, uh, short version. So I could kind of warp this car to make it like look like it's going really fast or something like that, um, which is kind of funny. The other ones are you can flip it. So if the car uses flip directions, you can flip directions in any particular way. Um, if you need to flip something because the light direction is different, you can do that too. Um, I find all of these very useful. So now that the transformation is processed by hitting enter, um, it's all done and it looks legit. You know, It's weird, but that's okay. Um, so back to this one. So let's say that we wanted to do something silly, like take this car and make a drive in the desert. Um, we can do that. Um, the main way to do it is to get it scaled correctly. So we can assume this thing's probably like five feet tall, right? So we don't want to just like, we can roughly estimate the size and how it would be in any particular area. This fence is probably four feet tall, maybe five. So we could sort of relate it to the fence to get a baseline, right? So that, if you kind of squint your eyes at it, it looks reasonable, like the car could drive right along the fence and that would be about right um, in terms of its scale. You know, this is a, a sports car. It's not super tall. You know, it's not six feet tall, six and a half feet tall, like a truck or something. So we can put it back further by just scaling it down slightly and go further and further back and scale it down smaller. So let's put it off to the left. Um, and we can play around with that scale and keep transforming it and keep, keep scaling it. There we go. About right there. That looks about right. So we hit enter and we can preserve that transformation. Now what's funny about it is that if we zoom in, um, you know, it doesn't have a ground shadow. The colors are all wrong and, and don't relate to the light. And then it also overlaps that bush, which is supposed to be in front of the car. So what we can do is we can take our lasso tool, you know, very quick and dirty, select that bush copy it and paste it in place on a new layer. And then we can put that in front of the layer of the car and now it overlaps the car. So 
we've done a very simple thing to increase the amount of space, right? See that how it overlaps and it stays in the same place? Um, it's not perfect, right? Because you can still see some of the ground color there, but it's better, right? It's an improvement. Then we can take um, our brush tool and under the color, um, we can take a dark color off of one of these trees and we can paint a ground shadow, right? We would have to mess around with this for a while to get it perfect, um, but this is a very short video and um, I just wanted to show you like the potential for how we can do a few things related to this transform tool. We can also do stuff like add another layer and then we can take the sky color and get it reflected in the car a little bit, right? So now we're getting these highlights that are more related to the actual car itself. Then we take the ground color and reflect it into the car, right? So that the ground color actually relates to everything. But one of the things that you'll notice is that it's a desaturated kind of landscape and the car is super saturated. So what I can do is select, make sure that I'm selected on the, on that car and adjust the hue, saturation, and brightness. So I can make the car kind of dark, I can make it kind of light. So if I lighten up the car, right, it looks relate a little more related. I can desaturate it. And I could even like, it's looking a little cold, so I could even like warm it up a little bit by moving the hue slider slightly. So now I could probably go in and repaint some of the darks, but it looks, at least reasonably within the color range of the painting or the, the photo. So I just kind of stuck this car in there and at a glance you wouldn't even notice that anything is off about it, you know. And most people only glance at images. So that could be even good enough for a quick Photoshop job. Um, and it's the transform tool really that uh, combined with selections, brushing, and a little bit of knowledge allows you to create things like this. Um, and this is just a silly example, but it get, it's enough to get you uh, started and on the right track.